right, in this segment, we'll start studying lists. Right now, we're just going to learn the basic rules for them. And then in the next segment, we'll program with uh, functions that either take lists or produce lists, just to break things into uh, slightly smaller pieces. Uh, we've already seen one way to build up compound data, and that was with tuples. And there are nice contrasts with lists. So with tuples, even though we could make them as wide as we wanted or as deep as we wanted, tuples inside of other tuples, we still had to pick that size when we were writing the program. So there was no way with tuples to say take in a number like 10 or n or x and then produce a tuple that had that many pieces because there'd be no type to write down for that thing because you don't know the size until you run the program. So lists don't have that restriction. We're going to be able to build lists with any number of elements, and we won't be limited by the type of the list. But there's a trade-off here, and that is that any list we build will have to have pieces that all have the same type. And that's just the rule for lists in ML. And we'll learn in future uh, segments and parts of the course how to program around that restriction by using other constructs in the language. All right. So to understand lists, just like with tuples, we're going to have ways to build them, and we're going to have ways to use them. So let's start with how we can build lists. The simplest list has zero elements in it. And you can build that zero element list by just writing left bracket, right bracket. This is itself a value, so the evaluation rule is trivial. This syntax evaluates to itself, and that's the empty list. Now, if you wanted a list with multiple elements in it, you can just write those down separated by commas. So let me show you a few examples here. So I really can write the empty list, and that's its value. You see the type there, quote a list. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. Let's ignore that for now. I could also make a list three, uh, four, five, and that would hold uh, three, four, five. You can see from the type here, it's a list of ints. So it doesn't matter how many elements are in it. A two element list has the same, num has the same type, and so does a four element list, and so on. Uh, these are all values because a list of values is a value, but I could put per, uh, uh, expressions in here, 3 plus 4, uh, 7, like this. And it will evaluate each of those. So this is the list holding a 3, and then a 7, and then a 7. You don't have to have lists of integers. You can have lists of Booleans as well. So here's a three element bool list. But you can't mix them. So if I had something like 3, 4 plus 5, true, then that's going to give a type error the same way 4 plus true gives a type error. All the elements of a list. Uh, have to have the same type. Of course, these are just values. I could bind a list uh, to a variable, uh, and so on. Okay. So there's one other way to build lists, which is very useful. And that's using this colon colon operation, which I'll pronounce cons for constructing a list. Cons, C-O-N-S. And here's how it works. All it does is evaluate E1 to some value, E2 to some value that is itself a list. And then it makes a list that has one more element than that list that E2 evaluated to. Namely, it puts the result of E1 on the front of the list. So if I flip back here, remember x is this list 7, 8, 9. I could say 5 cons onto x. And that would produce the list 5, 7, 8, 9. I could even say 6 cons on to 5 cons on to x. The parentheses would go like this. You don't actually need them. Uh, and that would be uh, 6, 5, 7, 8, 9, and so on. All right. Uh, one thing you can't do is something like this, right? And that just doesn't type check. And that's because we're trying to take a list of integers, namely the list holding six, and put that on the front of a list of integers. And a list of integers can't hold a list of integers. It is a list of integers. So this is the correct thing to do. You can have a list of a list of integers. So I could cons that six onto a list of list of integers, maybe like this, all right? And now, indeed, I have a list holding three lists of integers. The first is the list 6, the second the list 7, 5, and the third the list 5, 2. All right. So that's how to build lists. Now how about using them? Well, we need a way to access the pieces, and we need to know a way to find out if our list is empty or not. Because if you try to access the pieces of an empty list, you get a runtime error. So let's do that test first. There's a function in ML called null, N-U-L-L, do not think of this like the null in Java or C++ or any number of other languages. This is a function that takes a list as an argument and returns true if that list is empty and false otherwise. So for example, if I ask null of x, I'll get false, because remember x is not the empty list. 
But if I ask null of the empty list, I get true. And indeed, if some other list was empty and I asked null of that, I would get true. So once you know a list is not empty, it's reasonable to ask for its head, the first element in the list, or its tail, which is the list which is all the elements except the first one. And these are the two operations we are going to use to access the pieces of a list. So the head function, spelled hd, just takes a list and returns the first element. The tail function takes a list and returns all the other elements. All right, so these are just functions, so I can just call them like any other function. So if I ask for head of x, I get 7, because remember, x is this example list, 7, 8, 9. I can ask tail of x, that will give me back the list 8, 9. If I wanted the first element of that list, I'd have to ask head of tail of x, then I would get 8. You can ask, of course, also get tail of tail of x, that would be the one element list 9. You could ask tail of tail of tail of x. What's the tail of a one element list? It's the zero element list. So this is the empty list. Now if you asked head or tail of that, that would type check just fine. But if I actually evaluate this, I get an uncaught exception for trying to take head or tail of the empty list. I get the same thing if I use head. All right. So that's accessing the pieces of lists. We've really focused here on the syntax and the evaluation rules. So now let's switch to talking a little bit more about the types of lists and the types of functions for making them and using them. So just like when we added tuples, we had a new way of writing types. So int star int was a pair of ints, for example. We have new types for lists. So for any type t, the type t space list describes the values that are lists holding t elements in them. So as we've seen in the examples, int list is a list of ints, bool list is a list of bools, and so on. Now these things can nest. I think I've shown you a little bit of this. If I make a list of pairs of ints, that's fine. That's an int star int list. It's a list whose elements have type int star int. If I try to do something like cons uh, a 3 onto that, it won't type check, but if I try to cons a pair of ints onto that, we'll type check just fine. All right. So you can nest these things however you want. You could have a list with another list of ints inside of it. I've shown you one of those. You could have a list with a pair in it where that pair has a list inside of it and so on. All right. But what about the types of the operations I've given you for building lists and accessing lists? So probably the hardest one to understand is the type of the empty list. So I showed you before, this has this type written quote a space list, and I'll always pronounce quote a as alpha, like the Greek letter. So we say that the empty list has type alpha list. What that actually means is that you can replace that alpha with any type you want. So the empty list can have type int list, but it can also have type bool list, and it can also have type int star int list, and so on. And that's good, because that's what lets us cons 3 onto the empty list to get an int list, or true onto the empty list to get a bool list. So the empty list is a special thing that can have lots of types. Its type is alpha list. That lets it also have type t list for any type t. All right. So we're going to see that as a theme with these other operations as well. The cons operator also works for any kind of list. The rule is. E2 has to have type T list for some T, and then E1 has to have type T, because you have to add something of the correct type onto the list you started with. Then we have our operations for accessing lists, testing if they're empty, getting their head, getting their tail, and these really are just functions in ML. So I have their types written here, but we can also see that the read eval print loop. So null is just a function, again, it's nothing like null in other languages, that takes in a list of any type alpha. So for all types alpha, you can take in an alpha list, and we'll give you back true or false. And that's why I can ask null with a list of integers or with a list of booleans. In a couple sections later in the course, we'll learn how to write our own functions that have types with these alphas in it and other Greek letters, if you like. But for now, we're just going to use ones provided to us by the ML language. Similarly, head takes in a list of alphas for any type alpha, and what you get back is an alpha. That's why if you call head with a list of integers, you get back an integer. And if you call it with a list of booleans, 
you get back a Boolean. And finally, tail takes a list and returns a list, alpha list to alpha list, and those two type uh, lists have to have the same type, which is why if I say tail of 3 comma 4, I get an int list back because I passed it in int list. All right. So now we know our key operations for building lists and accessing lists. What we'll do next is a very powerful, very common thing in functional programming, which is to write useful functions that take and return lists.